Page Special Edition of the Black Tie Gala. I am one of your hosts, Shambria Davis. And I'm Patrice Bastien. Tonight we will take you behind the scenes at some of our sponsors that made tonight happen, as well as some of the very important people. Now Patrice, it's funny that you say that. Not only will we be going behind the scenes, but we'll also be interviewing some of the recipients, as well as highlighting some of the events that's going on tonight. So, if you're at home, you're missing out. But guess what? It's okay. We got you here covered at the Black Tie Gala. It is indeed an honor to serve as the 11th president of Alabama Agricultural Mechanical University. This has been such a wonderful evening, and I'm certain that it is one that will be remembered for years to come. I am here with none other than the 11th president of Alabama A&M, Dr. Andrew Hugini. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Chambrio. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It's, it's, it's just an honor to be here, so I'm trying to take it all in. So one thing I will say or I want to ask is, being that this is the Black Tie Gala and not many people may know what it is, can you tell us a little bit about it? Certainly. Uh, the Black Tie Gala is uh, the, the stellar fundraising event for the university. Uh, we've had it for some 18 years. Uh, it's an opportunity not only to showcase Alabama a University, but showcase our excellent students uh, through what we call the Parade of Scholars. It's also the event that we use to raise money for what we call current uh, scholarships. Uh, sometimes we encourage individuals to do endowed scholarships, but these are current youth scholarships. And we are very, very pleased that each year the amount has increased so that we can provide support to our students. If I can do it, you can too. Beautiful, supportive, she was every day. She was. Montez Boyd had to grow up in a matter of seconds when his family was torn apart. Well, when I was 16 years old, uh, I was kind of the victim of a tragic event. My father had killed my mother on a um, Sunday morning. Boyd was just 16 years old when his father murdered his mother. So instead of like having to think about myself and just, you know, what I'm going to go to school and do tomorrow, how's band going to be and stuff like that, it was more a fact of like, Montez, you got to make it every day because you don't really have anything anymore. Before his mother's death, college was on his mind. I had all the aspirations of going to college because I wanted to be successful myself and also make my parents proud. But once his mother was taken away from him, the thought of college almost slipped away. I had every reason to fail and people probably wouldn't have looked at me any like differently if I would have. With the support of his grandparents and a high school guidance counselor. She really helped me do moments like this, just talking it out, crying it out, whatever needed to be done. Boyd was on a successful track to college. I had applied to places like Alabama, Auburn, UAH and things like that and I had got in but it just didn't really feel like I fit in there. But when he visited the hill with an aunt, something clicked. And um, she had brought me up here to the hill and um, I will say the first thing I remember is that it felt like family. Because of the family environment Alabama A&M University provides, Boyd has been able to thrive. Well, I've been more successful here than I feel like I could have been anywhere else. Thanks to those who invested in the Black Tie Gala Scholarship Fund, Boyd was able to fulfill a promise to his grandparents. My money had kind of finally ran out and I had, I had just a couple more thousand dollars that I needed to actually graduate debt free. In come May, he will fulfill the promise he made to his mother. I would like to think she's proud. I would really like to. For 18 years, Alabama A&M University has used this event to increase institutional awareness, raise scholarship dollars for deserving students, and recognize key community and university stakeholders. So joining me now is Mr. Archie Tucker, the Vice President of Marketing, Communications, and Advancement. His office had the pleasure of working with some of our wonderful sponsors for tonight's event. How are you doing, Mr. Tucker? I'm very well, thank you. Okay. So there's a goal each year that is set for the gala. How did the goals come out for this year? Well, we looked at past performance and what we were able to do. I think last year we raised somewhere between 150 and 160,000. We decided to stretch it this year and make it 200000 and we were able to achieve that goal. So how does it feel being able to achieve that goal? Excellent. I mean, the more money we raise, the more we have to give back for scholarship dollars for our students. So it makes us feel great. So what were some of the key factors to attribute to making that goal happen? Hard work, <laughs> perseverance, uh, making sure that we're reaching out to all of our stakeholders. Do you think Mr. Carl Thomas had something to do with that? 
I think so. He certainly helped us with our ticket sales, and uh, we had a lot of interest because of him. So tonight, the attire that the recipients are wearing were donated from Joseph A. Banks and David Bridal. How do you gain those sponsors? Well, by going and building relationships uh, with both of those companies, we personally went out, myself and Reba Trammell, and uh, we asked would they be willing to support us. And so we were able to raise money uh, from several trustees, several board members, and uh, other constituents as well, and worked with Joseph A. Bank, and they gave us some tremendous discounts, and we were able to pull it off. As these scholars grace our stage this evening, I hope that you are filled with abundant joy and pride as you witness what you have done. Ladies and gentlemen, these are examples of the opportunities you have created. Before walking in the Parade of Scholars, for making sure the dress fits just right, our students probably would have not had the opportunity to shine like this without the support of donors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I own a dress. I'll always remember you and keep you in my prayers when I look at this dress. A few years ago, the vice president of the Office of Marketing Communications and Advancement realized something. Well, what we found in previous years that we ask students to be a part of the program. However, the students don't necessarily have the funds to be able to uh, dress in formal attire. Partnering with Joseph A. Bank and David's Bridal, the Office of Marketing, Communication, and Advancement came up with a solution. This is the second year that uh, we've raised money in order to ensure that students are uh, properly attired for the event. Ensuring that students like Vanessa Kishasha look their best means the world to her. Vanessa Kishasha. Kishasha is a graduate student who majors in food science with very big dreams. The reason I started doing food science is because I come from a developing country. My main country is Kenya. And we have drought season, seasonal droughts every now and then. So me specializing in food biotechnology would help me know how to manipulate plants that could grow in drought-stricken areas. Receiving a scholarship helped her offset the cost of school. I was in dire need of help to clear up my balance and I just applied for the foundation scholarships and I was lucky enough to get the Black Tie Gala Scholarship. But she was a little concerned about the cost of the dress for the gala. Well, you have to make it work sometimes. It's a sacrifice, a small sacrifice for a good occasion. Not only did she not have to sacrifice a dime on the dress, she didn't even have to spend a penny on alterations. It fits to your body. So yes, tell me how it you're does. <laughs> Which when we caught up with her during the final dress fitting, she could not wait to show off her dress. I just wait for that day to wear this dress, look all fabulous in it, and be at the event. Okay guys, HR thinks that some aversion therapy will help you three with all the nervous fainting, mm. screaming, and Ugh. jumping stuff that you guys tend to do. So I'm gonna show you some things that seem scary, but really aren't, okay? All right, so say a region's credit, check card, or now prepaid card gets lost oh. or stolen. Oh. It, hang in there. Regions lock it means you can lock your personal cards with a touch of a button, like so. So if you suspect fraud online or at a store, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's hold it on the freaky deaky, okay? Lock it means you can lock your cards for online, in-store, or even ATM transactions, right? Lock it is easy. Lock it puts you in control. Yeah, there's no reason to panic with lock it. Awesome. Okay, starting from the top. Open a Regions checking, credit, or now card account with Lockit. It. It's secure, easy to use, and customizable. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2018 Diversity Award goes to Timothy Valley 14. Joining me now is Ms. Donna Lawhead, Manager of Financial Services with TVA. How are you doing tonight, Ms. Donna? I'm doing great, thank you. Very excited to be here. That's good. So, you're a contributor to Alabama A&M. How did that contribution occur? 
Uh, so um, we have at TBA, we have an intern program um, for um, financial operations and performance, which is the um, business unit that I am a part of. Um, so TBA is always looking for uh, new talent um, uh, to bring into the company so we can um, grow our talent pool. So. So what, guy, what keeps you all from uh, coming back and contributing to Alabama and A&M? Well, like I said, we're just always looking for new talent, um, you know, new people to bring in the, to the company um, with uh, new ideas, young, fresh, um, new School of Business students. So we, we want to continue our partnership with Alabama A&M for our intern program. Okay. And speaking of the new School of Business and partnerships, we heard that you recently partnered with the new School of Business on the campus of Alabama A&M. How did that partnership occur? What were some of the things that you guys had to do to get that going? Um, well, uh, we just, you know, we contacted the School of Business and they were more than willing to let us come in. I know I've come to uh, Alabama A&M uh, personally and done um, interviews with some of the School of Business, the candidates there for internships. And so um, we're just, you know, we're always looking for uh, new opportunities to bring new students in. So I heard that you're receiving an award tonight. How does that feel? It feels great. Yes, TBA, um, we're very honored to be the recipient of the Diversity Award today. Um, diversity is a big part of uh, TBA. Um, we're a, a champion of that, and so we feel that uh, you know diversity is really what makes us all special and unique and really valuable as people. Reading is knowledge, and, and knowledge, knowledge is power. power. So combat your rivals and read the Bible, which said, In this world you shall face great tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. <clears throat> you are now tuned into the Kicking It With Kodak podcast. It's the smoothest podcast you'll ever listen to. What is going on, everyone? And welcome back to another installment of the Kick It With Kodak podcast. I'm your host, Kodak, and I am joined by Maya Rob. How are you today? Good, good, Clinton. How it's are wonderful you? to have you. I'm great. It's um, good. Let's get into it. So really, um, you know, for this event, you know, I want to get to know you a little bit. What's some of your background? Uh, kind of get into that. How well, you got here? I'm a native from the Rocket City, Whoa. 256. <laughs> I'm a native from here, so okay. born and raised down the street at Buckhorn High School, and yeah. then boom, I'm here. Nice. I came to Alabama A&M, joined the choir, mm. joined Sigma Alpha Yoda. Wonderful. So, and now May 4th, graduation. Wow. <laughs> I'm a senior. It's so been a long road. It's a long road. Yeah, I finally yeah, made yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Exactly. I'm excited. And what about you? Where well, are you from? So I'm from the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, as it is affectionately called. Okay. And really, I'm down here. When I came down here at first, it was a little bit of a culture shock, just Definitely. because from being a big city, coming down to a small yeah. city like this. But I, have, I can say that I came and found a home here on the hill. I uh, found brothers. I joined Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Ooh. Incorporated. Um, and I'm really starting to get into myself and learning my craft and passion with That's this awesome. podcast and interviews. I've got to kick it with a lot of people and, here on and the, the hill. And, yeah. and, and, and in the, the community. Area, most definitely. Yeah. Uh, most notably, I got to talk to Devin Keith. And I wow. actually got to talk to the president here, Dr. Andrew Hagini Jr. Um, <laughs> and you got an interview amazing. with him. I did. That was a wonderful interview. Mm. Maybe you should check it out. Uh, I will. <laughs> so Go check it out. How do, you, how do you feel about you know this being your first time hosting an event such as this? Honestly, I'm nervous. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared, yeah. butterflies, right, everything right. you could imagine. But honestly, I think when we get up there mm. and get on stage, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be fine. Right. I think it's going to be a breeze. <laughs> All the butterflies will be gone. We know that a degree from Alabama A&M University can provide us with limitless opportunities. And we truly believe that you can start here and go anywhere. So I'm here with scholarship recipient Clinton Henson. But to Alabama A&M students, they may know him as Kicking It With Kodak. So how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. So we're here at the Black Tie Annual Gala. So how do you feel about being here tonight? Well, this is my first time here, um, so I'm actually excited. Slightly nervous, my palms are kind of sweaty right now, but th that'll clear up once everybody gets in, the vibe gets right, the mood gets going. Um, and I'm excited to see all the people. I heard it's going to be over like 600, 700 people here, so I'm excited to see what that looks like. That's amazing. So it's, it's interesting that you say you're a little nervous because yeah. I see that you have a show called Kicking It With Kodak. So yeah. tell me a little bit about that. So it's Kicking It With Kodak. It's the smoothest podcast you'll ever listen to, by the way. Um, <laughs> 
people, uh, I look for people in the community, such as, um, you know, or some professors on campus, and I get their tips to success. I think that everybody has a story to tell, mm -hmm. and everybody has something t that they need to hear, you know what I mean? And um, really, I just try to use some of their pointers that they give me to apply to my daily life, and then I turn around and kind of relay that message in my own special way on the podcast to people who may not have heard the interviews, um, and then use my point of view on what they told me. Okay, so that's, that's great to hear. So how long have you had this podcast? I've been doing this podcast since June of 2017, okay. um, and it's picked up ever since then. So we're going almost on to the year anniversary. So I'm thinking of something big to do for that. Oh, that's <laughs> always amazing to hear. So speaking of your podcast and you interviewing a lot of people, being here tonight and being able to actually host this yeah, event, how do you feel about that? Because that's like a different arena. It actually is, and it's actually great to be on the other side of an interview mm -hmm. right now. So you're doing a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. um, but hosting really is, a, it's like I'm going in a little bit more public speaking. So this is actually one of the bigger gigs that will allow me to practice that. Um, and then I'm excited just to, to dabble in a different arena. Usually I'm sitting down, talking to somebody, mm -hmm. having like a one-on-one -on -one discussion. Mm -hmm. But now it's like a one-on-700 -on discussion. <laughs> so yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Um, and hopefully I can read. So. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I know if you can have a podcast, yeah. you can read. So not only will you be hosting, like I mentioned, you are a scholarship recipient. Yeah. Tell me, how does that feel to be a scholarship recipient? It feels really good. Um, it shows that hard work does pay mm -hmm. off. Um, and then even when you have a need for funds that if you work hard enough, they will be provided for you. Um, and I definitely am grateful to Alabama A&M University for providing me with this scholarship. Um, and I'm going to definitely apply everything that I learned here tonight further into my career and make me a better person. 98.9 WJAB-FM Huntsville. 100,000 watts, 24 hours a day. Smooth jazz and cool vocals. I'm just a prisoner of love. I get misty just tolling and Yay. 90.9 WJAB. From the campus of Alabama A&M University. Our relationship with Alabama A&M within the physical facilities began in 2010. The need for attention to this landmark was great and we were ready to meet that challenge. So I am here once again with one of the heavy hitters of the Black Tie Gala, Mr. Michael Mars, the director of Airmark Physical Facilities. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, thank you. That's amazing. So this is the event tonight. How do you feel about being here? I'm excited to be here. Such a wonderful opportunity to come out and just give back to the um, students. So it was just a pleasure to be here. Well, we're excited to have you here tonight. So I see that you are the chair of tonight's event. How does it feel being the chair? <laughs> it's very exciting uh, when I was asked to be the part of the, uh, to be the chair. Um, at first, I was a little taken back. I was like, wow, me, little old me. Um, so. Uh, I took, took the opportunity, um, I was just welcome the, um, the opportunity to be the chair and, you know, showcase what we do here for Alabama A&M uh, for Airmark Physical Facilities. Okay, well you say little old me, I say mighty you because that's an amazing <laughs> thing to do. I am so grateful to God for bringing me to Alabama A&M University. I will definitely be a proud, proud bulldog till the day I die. This is my home. Just a few years ago, Nadia Young thought she would call a different place home. Well, I love D.C. That's where my dad's from, and I have a brother that lives there. And so I go there every year during Christmas time and sometimes during the 4th of July. Before graduating high school, she had her mind set on another HBCU. Plans were to graduate from high school, go to Howard University for undergrad, and then go to some sort of Ivy League for law school. Although her family supported her dreams, the cost of moving to D.C. was just too much. My family and I could not afford it. We couldn't even afford to get me there. Young was at first hesitant about becoming a bulldog. So I came with an attitude that I was too good for the university. But soon she realized there is something special about this place. a and is like, oh, this sounds cliche, but it's a home away from home. So I have like parents here. I have a mom and a dad, Miss Holloway, Dr. Reeves are my parents. I have a granddad, Dr. Hassan, who's a chemistry professor. And they just received me with open arms and let me know that this was the place for me and anything I needed from them, I could find. 
and it was through her bulldog family she found a way to pay for her fall semester classes. Reluctantly, I would have had to take out another loan, and that's not something I wanted to do after my first year of school. Young is grateful for those who contributed to making this possible. And it means more than just money. It's, it's like a part of my life. Like, it helps me reach my goal. As Young presses on to becoming a lawyer, she keeps in mind something she would have told that young girl with dreams of going to D.C. for her undergrad degree. If I would just have an open mindset that I would get so much more. Welcome back. I'm joined by Miss Reba Trammell. How are you doing tonight, Miss Reba? Doing great. How are you, honey? I'm well. Good. So can you tell, it, tell us what it is that you do here tonight? Sure. Well, I am the Director of Development at Alabama A&M University, which means I'm one of the fundraisers for the university. So with that, what is day one of planning an event like this like? Well, day one will be Monday morning for next year. And so we, this whole time, have been making um, memos and notes of what we need to do already so we can improve as each year passes. So for next year, we already have a list of probably, I'd guess, about 12 things that we know we're going to implement. So day one is literally the Monday after the gala when we have our post-gala uh, recap meeting. And then we start to make plans then for next year. So you mentioned that for next year's gala, you're going to implement at least 12 items. How do you come up with this? Well, we come up with it just by seeing what we're doing now and where we can improve or if new ideas come up or if we see that we're having an issue with something that we thought was working but we realize now that it wasn't so it's just several things and sometimes it's just um, suggestions that some of our sponsors or um, even some of our students make. So I know that you're not working this event alone. Approximately how many people does it take to gather an event as such as this? So there are 30 people on the gala committee and I have six of the 30, I would say, are team leads, and those team leads are in our office, which is the advancement office. We are here, man, hosting at the uh, 2018 Black Tie Gala. It's lit. Footage that we're trying to get. <laughs> excited I'm excited. I'm excited. I am. She helped me out here, so if I do good, it's on her. Say thank you, Ms. Fox, for helping.
Companies hunger for our food scientists. Here, a new generation manages our cities of tomorrow. The discovery of hardier plants, healthier animals, is growing at our research station. Alabama A&M University, where new designs and ideas are put to the test. Be a researcher in our labs, or a forestry fire dog in our fields. Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. So here we are with Front Page News. This is such an honor and a privilege and very unexpected with Grammy nominated and R&B artist Carl Thomas. How are you doing tonight? Uh, I'm doing really good. Um, it's kind of cool to be called Front Page. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I've never, you know what I mean, been described as that term before, but I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful. But this is really um, something that's very important to me because um, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a passion, you know what I mean? It's, a, it's something when the present and the past can be one, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I saw a lot of mentorship going on here tonight, just as well as I saw a lot of people having fun and enjoying the fellowship of just simply being together in their alma mater, you know what I mean? So um, whenever it's something classy, whenever it's something classy and black, <laughs> you know, I'm definitely, definitely trying to be a part of that. Okay, you know? okay. So with that being said, did you attend an HBCU? Uh, no, I did not. I was actually one of those unfortunate students that wasn't as fortunate to, to get the type of financing that I needed. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Uncle Jerry. Thank you. <laughs> no, 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 I'm kidding. But no, I didn't, uh, I didn't, I wasn't that fortunate, but most of, most of the tentacles in my family you know, just all attended HSBCUs, and and, and 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 my friends that I graduated high school with. This was the talk. You know, I grew up in public housing, and so the talk it was two kinds of talk. There was the talk of, of course, first and foremost, getting out of the projects, mm -hmm. and then going to a black college. You know, <laughs> so um, you know, I, I do as much as I can. I do as much as I can, or as much as you know, that people will allow me to support my own. And it doesn't necessarily have to be A&M. It could be, you know what I mean? It could be, it could be any school as long as it's us. It. Represent us. I'm with it. Well, we yeah. definitely appreciate this. So I must ask, what are your favorite songs? What are your favorite current artists? My favorite songs, uh, I, I would have to say, my favorite songs really don't have a whole lot to do with this era. You know what I mean? But uh, if, if I had to have a favorite artist right now, uh, forgive me, R&B world, but if I, if I had to have a favorite artist right now, I'd have to say Cardi B, hands down. You know, um, she's somebody that I had an opportunity uh, to watch trying to beat down the doors of the record companies. And what a lot of people really don't know is how much she actually struggled she struggled a lot longer than you've seen her have success. So, you know, it, it was really cool. It's always cool to see to see artists blossom and rosebud outward. You know, it's always cool to see that. But just me having the opportunity to see that happen in the same fashion that I grinded. Uh, many of my counterparts, you know, that came out with me the year I came out. We in music, we call that our graduating class. You know what I mean? The, the artists that come out the same year or around you come out, you end up touring together, uh, you know, going to each other's baby showers and you know each other's families and what have you. So it's really, really cool for me to just see, you know, her rise like that. Yeah. Plus the music is banging. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. Well, with that being said, we would like to thank you for your performance and thank you for gracing us with your presence here at Alabama A&M University. For Front Page News, I'm Patrice Bass. And I'm Shambria Davis. And for Front Page News, I'm Carl Thomas. Thank you very much, Alabama A&M. We love you. All right. Good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> outside. Oh, oh.